Formula One championship deciders are always portrayed as head-to-head -head contests between the two or more contenders who are still in with a shot. However, these contests still take place with all the other drivers on track, and sometimes one of those other drivers ends up inadvertently playing a role in the outcome of a world championship. We've come up with nine times this has memorably happened in F1 history. Let us know in the comments what you think of our list and any other similar scenarios you can think of. For nine years, this controversy was based mainly on suspicion. Then Norberto Fontana came clean in an interview in 2006, claiming he'd been instructed by Ferrari team boss Jean Todt to hold up Jacques Villeneuve if the Williams driver, fighting for the championship with Ferrari's Michael Schumacher, came up to lap him in his Ferrari-powered Sauber. Fontana only held Villeneuve up for four corners, having made a big effort to stay out of Schumacher's way, but he still managed to cost Villeneuve a couple of seconds just as the Williams driver had got to within one second of Schumacher's lead. Ferrari and Sauber denied Fontana's version of events when he told his story, but a Sauber source recently told the race Fontana's account was accurate. Senior figures at Williams weren't bitter about the interference, perhaps because it didn't decide the title in the end. Some have even admitted they'd have done the same if a smaller team had been affiliated with Williams at the time. This is another entry that features lower on our list because ultimately it didn't change the outcome of the World Championship. It was perhaps typical of Sato's F1 career that in his only start of 2003, as a late stand-in for Jacques Villeneuve who walked out on BAR a race early, Sato ended up playing a massive role in how the title decider played out. Recovering from a lowly grid position after rain-affected qualifying, Michael Schumacher badly misjudged a lunge on Sato into the final chicane on lap 6. Schumacher claimed Sato left the door open, but he came from so far back that he was never going to make a clean pass. He damaged his front wing on the back of the BAR, but fortunately this happened just before the pit entry. Schumacher came in for a new nose, dropped to last and fought back to 8th via another scare at the chicane when he misjudged a move on Cristiano de Mata's Toyota which caused his brother Ralph to spin his Williams just behind them and clip the Ferrari. This one is a slightly speculative presence on this list as it's never been absolutely confirmed that it was Tuero and Takagi's collision debris that caused the puncture that ended Michael Schumacher's 1998 title chances. Schumacher had already given himself a mountain to climb in the Suzuka finale by stalling on the grid from pole, handing rival Mika Hakkinen a clear shot at victory. Needing to win with Hakkinen third or lower to end Ferrari's title drought, Schumacher made ferocious progress from the back of the grid. By lap 22 of 51, he was up to third with only Hakkinen and the sister Ferrari of Eddie Irvine ahead, but he still needed something to go wrong for Hakkinen to rescue his championship hopes. Then last place Minardi driver Tuero's lunge at Takagi's Tyrrell into the chicane wiped both out and scattered plenty of debris across the track. Probably not coincidentally, two minutes later Schumacher's right rear tyre burst as he approached the first corner. The Ferrari pulled off to the side of the track, immediately confirming Hakkinen as champion. Fernando Alonso needed a moderate miracle at the Interlagos finale as he arrived 13 points behind Sebastian Vettel's faster Red Bull and then qualified three places adrift of it in seventh. That miracle looked to be on the cards on a drizzly first lap as Alonso made a great start, Vettel made an average one and then lost more ground when pinched to the inside at the first corner by none other than his own Red Bull teammate Mark Webber. Vettel was then tipped into a spin at turn 4 by Senna's Williams which hit his car again as it faced the wrong way in front of the rest of the pack. The fact that Williams was out with destroyed suspension showed how hard the hit had been. Despite bodywork and exhaust damage that left Vettel down on power and with poor handling for the rest of the race, he tigered his way back from last on the opening lap to finish sixth. 
Before we get on to the days where unexpected interference did play a more decisive role, we wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who has subscribed to our channel so far. And if you like what you see here but aren't yet part of our community, feel free to hit that button to join the team anytime. The 2002 French Grand Prix is unique in this list in that it's the only title decider we've included that wasn't the final race of the year. In fact, this was the earliest an F1 championship has ever been wrapped up, with Michael Schumacher winning his fifth crown in July, just 11 races into a 17-race season. Were it not for a late engine failure for Toyota's Alan McNish at Manicor, Schumacher would have had to wait another week. Five laps from the end, McNish's engine blew up, dropping oil on the racing line at the Adelaide hairpin. Marshalls displayed yellow flags for the stranded Toyota, but not oil flags, so when race leader Kimi Raikkonen hit the brakes, he slid wide on the oil. Schumacher was just far enough back to see what was happening, moving slightly offline at the last moment, so he didn't hit as much of the oil as Raikkonen did. As Raikkonen scrambled back onto the circuit from the runoff area, Schumacher chopped across his path to take the lead, enabling him to equal Juan Manuel Fangio's record of five F1 championships. Nicky Lauda's remarkable drive from 11th on the grid to claim the second place he needed to win the 1984 World Championship by half a point required a bit of good fortune later in the race. It took the Austrian just 33 laps to climb to third, but with McLaren teammate Alain Prost leading, that wasn't going to be enough. At that point, Lauda was 38 seconds behind Nigel Mansell, who held the second place he needed. By the end of lap 50, that gap had only come down to 30 seconds, with just 20 laps remaining. But Mansell was running into brake trouble that would prove decisive in F1's closest final standings. He went off the track on lap 51, spinning and rejoining five seconds ahead of Lauda, who just set back-to-back -back fastest laps. Lauda passed him on the following lap before Mansell went off again at the same place. The Lotus driver's race was over and Lauda went unchallenged to the chequered flag and his final world title. Before 2021 served up one title contender passing another for the race victory and the title on the final lap, 2008 was unmatched for late drama to decide a championship. That year, Toyota's Timo Glock was the outsider unexpectedly thrust into a title deciding scenario. The German was one of the few cars to gamble on staying out on slicks as rain started to fall in the closing laps of the Brazilian Grand Prix. But as the rain increased, Glock lost just enough time over the final two laps to enable Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton to pass him at the final proper corner at Interlagos, giving Hamilton the extra point he needed to rip the title from race winner Felipe Massa's grasp. Glock says he still receives accusations today that he slowed down to let Hamilton take the title every time the Brazilian Grand Prix rolls around. That's obviously nonsense, as the onboard footage from Glock's final lap shows just how difficult conditions were by then. And the conspiracy theorists would do well to explain how Glock's Toyota teammate Jarno Trulli, also on slicks, managed to set a final lap time within one tenth of a second of what Glock managed. Nothing else we saw during Toyota's expensive and ultimately unsuccessful time in F1 suggested the team would be that good at choreographing such a scenario. Fernando Alonso, Mark Webber, Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton all still had a shot going into the final race of 2010, but Alonso and Webber were the main protagonists, the Ferrari eight points ahead of the Red Bull up front. In the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, they ran fourth and fifth early on behind Vettel, Hamilton and Jensen Button, putting Alonso on course to be champion in his first Ferrari season. But Ferrari focused too much on Webber, covering the Red Bull's relatively early pit stop, and both emerged behind the Renault of Petrov, one of a group of cars that had stopped for tyres under the safety car, caused by a nasty lap one shunt involving Michael Schumacher and Tonio Liuzzi. And behind Petrov was where Alonso and Weber stayed, as with no more pit stops needed and no clear chances to pass, they could only fume their way to 7th and 8th places behind the immovable Renault in F1's final race before fragile tyres and DRS were brought in to spice things up. Vettel, who pitted at a more normal time and rejoined clear of this queue, 
leapfrogged them both to snatch the title. Sergio Perez expertly holding up Lewis Hamilton in the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix doesn't count as unexpected interference as Perez was Max Verstappen's teammate and it was made clear to him it was his job to have an impact. Nicholas Latifi's involvement was just unfortunate and certainly not intentional. Hamilton had the race and the championship in the bag when Latifi crashed in the closing stages, bringing out the safety car. That enabled Verstappen to pit for fresh tyres and once race director Michael Massey hastily removed the lapped cars that were between the title contenders and called the safety car in sooner than F1's rules allowed to make sure there was one more racing lap before the end, Hamilton was a sitting duck. Whatever your opinion on those events, and we've made so many other videos about it that now isn't the time to get back into it, it's unfair on Latifi that he felt the need to apologise for playing an inadvertently decisive role in one of the most dramatic F1 championship battles of all time. None of the drivers we've featured here wanted to play a role in deciding a world championship. They were all just going about their races as normal, and unfortunately circumstances put them in the wrong place at the wrong time.